God trains you to do what he wants you to do. Amen. That's the difference between God and this world. So Christian life, I would say, is a life where you are transformed by the power of God coming into your life and the presence of Jesus and by the fellowship that you have with Jesus. Your desires are developed. You have a desire now. Everybody is very religious. They'll tell you, come, ask our God. Our God hears and our God will give you whatever you ask. So I used to think, yes, our God also is like that. Our God hears and he will give you whatever you ask. But the thing is, then I found out that it's not saying that at all. It is not saying that you come to our God and he'll give you whatever you ask because I'll tell you, I'll put it in a shocking way, then only you'll understand it. Sometimes you have to shock the people, right? Our God is not one to whom you come and he'll give you the desires of your heart because if God gave me everything that I desired and if this is what Christianity is all about and Jesus is all about, that if I ask whatever, he will give me. If God gave me whatever I desired, I can guarantee you I will never I would have I would I would have never have become what I am today. Why? Because I never would have in my wildest dream imagined that I can ask something like this. You understand what I'm talking about? So every day I thank God today that He did not give me what I asked for. Because what I asked for is the problem. What I asked for was so pitiful, so little. It was nothing. It was based on my fallenness, my fallen nature, that Adamic nature that creeped into man since fall and has tainted his very personality and his thinking and his heart and his mind so that he cannot think any bigger than that. He thinks in very small, minuscule ways. Possibilities do not occur in his mind. He's just here to get by. He's just satisfied to just get by with his life and just barely make it through. 
So if you had me asking, I would have never asked anything like this. In my wildest dream, I would have never asked a ministry like this, a, a life like this, nothing. I would have never, never, on my own, I would have never ever asked him anything like this. And I was asking him, you know, I don't know where you are from. From where I f- I'm from, they told me, go to college, get a degree, so you'll get some job, because you need to pay rent, get married, raise kids, have a retirement. So, somehow you have to pull through this life. The whole thing is, you have to pull through this life. Life will just go year after year and it'll be finished soon. So you just have to somehow manage. So we were in the managing mode, not progressing mode. (laughs) Just manage. Just manage to keep your head above water. Manage to keep floating. Manage to keep paying the rent. Manage to just keep eating. Manage to keep getting by. Manage, manage, manage. The mantra, as we say in India, is manage. Don't sink, don't drown, manage. And I was happy to manage. So I was managing to pass, which was a big thing. (laughs) Because I was not interested in college, you know. What they taught me was meaningless to me. When, you know, (laughs) when they gave the college application, they said, what do you want to study? I said, what will they give? I'll study anything what they give, you know. I had no choice. So I had to put something and I said, be calm. You know, they said, no, 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 be calm. I said, what will you give me? They said, philosophy. So they gave me philosophy. I went to class and that guy was talking about something, you know, that just my head was spinning, you know. <laughs> now I think I'd like it better. <laughs> but I just hated it. I got out of the thing and went and got a hold of the man, contacted the principal, said, give me anything else. He said, what do you want? I said, Any- I would have gotten anything I wanted, you know. But you know what I said? Give me whatever is there. He just looked at it and said, how about politics? I said, fine. Anything other than this? <laughs> Anything other than this? Now that's, from, that's like going from the fire pan to the fire. You know. <laughs> Bad to worse, you know. I went in there, you know, I'm totally uninterested. What they're teaching, just, I just had no relationship with it. I was not interested in it. I will just, the, I'll just buy the book, just barely get by, just study one day before the exam and just study enough to just get by because I had one thing still left, that is some basic pride <laughs> that you can't fail. Everybody will laugh. So you got to somehow pass it, pass it, you know. So I just went and passed somehow, somehow get by. And I was proud that I could get by with so little of studying, you know. Just one night studying will get me by. Clever. When I went to Bible college, see, this is when I really encountered Jesus. When I went to Bible college, I went in that state, really. You know, because no teaching of the kind that you're hearing today, you know. I went there, I was a Christian, I was a believer. But, you know, but mostly when you went to church, they preached against desires. You see, they said, why you're desiring this, why you're desiring, you have wrong things. You want to become this and that, you can't. You know, humble yourself. Tell God I will be the doormat. (laughs) I'll be the donkey. I'll be a cow. I'll be whatever. Not man made in the image and likeness of God. Everything else other than that. They're ready to be the donkey. They told us, you know, Jesus, uh, donkey carried Jesus. How many of you would like to be the donkey, you know? So we all lifted up their hands. Take, I'm enrolling for the donkey. Privilege. <laughs> so we were ready to be anything other than the man made in the image and likeness of God. Nobody ever, see I preach so much about the man made in the image and likeness of God. But nobody ever tell me, wake up, you're made in the image and likeness of God. You ought not to be like this. You are in the image and likeness of God. Literally a little God. Nobody ever told me that. 
So when I went to Bible college, I was a Christian, unbelievable, you know. Christian, they had what is called a orientation, first day. You have to register and then they have a meeting where this very smart guy, you know, one of the professors gave a big lecture on your rules and regulations and very funny session it was, you know. <laughs> and then he gave a piece of paper. He said, pass, pass this paper, piece of paper to everyone. Everyone had this piece of paper and he said, now write down what you want to see yourself become at the end of this education and drop it in the box in the back when you go out. And you won't believe, if you told me to write on World War I or two, I would have written three or four pages, you know. You won't believe, he wanted four lines and no more than four lines. I just could not come up with four lines of what I wanted to happen to me through the four, through the years of education there. Just could not. I just could not, I just did not have any motivation, any ambition, any goal, nothing. Did not know where I was going, just barely getting by, you know. So, could not really put down, you know. If you ask me today, I will say something like, God has planned something that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has ever comprehended, but I want to comprehend it and live it out in this life. Amen. That's what I would say today. But in those days, I never knew these things. Nobody ever told me that. The no eye has seen, no ear has heard. That's why I say it so many times. I love it, you know. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. You don't know how much it means to me. No mind has ever comprehended. But behold, the Holy Spirit has revealed them unto us. I want to see it. I want to hear it. I want to know it. And I want to live it. That's what I would write today. My four lines will be that. But on that day, I remember, I just could not put it down on paper. I wrote something, and I bet you hundreds of students, everybody, and all that they wrote, you could take it and throw it in the garbage. It will be amount to nothing. Not only me, I can imagine what others wrote. It would be like, you know, I want to become a great pastor or evangelist or something like that, but nothing more than that. I don't think so. Nothing like what I just said to you. Because nobody had any idea of the wonderful things that God has prepared. That you can know it and live it in this life. Nobody knew it. That's how I started, you see. But then I came to know God by hearing, preaching, teaching and being with people that are bigger than us. See, before that, that's a problem. I was not enjoying God, I was enjoying my friends. I was enjoying other things, music and other things, and I was enjoying going out and having a good time and all of that. But all these guys are on my level or below. You know, we had a group, you know, gather together, everybody sing and play and all of that and go on certain, you know, uh, programs to do things and so on. To try to get this voice, you have to, you have to just, I was like, I was 18, 19 years old, and some of these guys were 25 years old. And I have to catch them by the neck and bring them together and say, sit down, look here, sing, play, do this, you know. Because everybody is like a, they'll be just playing around, joking, and making fun and all of that. So, when you have fellowship like that, you have no pro, no prospect for progress <laughs> because because you are on your level that's it that's the level you can go down but not up <laughs> but then I learned this delight yourself also in the Lord business Amen. I began to enjoy God I began to love the word of God I've never heard teaching like that I began to go into it I began to put my head to it and and sink my head into it and, uh, and hear it, and hear it, and hear it, and love it, and, and be amazed. Every day was a day of amazement for me as I heard and read and understood things. And as a result, my heart was formed all over again, it looked like. My thoughts changed, my ambition changed, my, my goals changed, my aims changed. My whole orientation changed. Everything changed so that I became like a different man 
because I was engaged with someone who is bigger than me, Amen. millions of times bigger than me. And his thoughts are higher than mine and his ways are higher than mine. How high? As high as the heaven is from the earth. <laughs> so he could never be brought down. He could only take me up. And every Amen. day he's taking me up from where I was, higher and higher and higher. I was beginning to go higher and higher and higher in my thinking. Nothing other, nothing else was happening. I was the same old me. But in my thinking, I was different. I was thinking on a different level now. Amen. Desiring different things. Desiring, you know, things that I've never desired before. What I want to do and how I want to do the ministry and what I want to become and what is possible for me. Totally new outlook for my future began to come and dawn in my heart. You know, after that, you didn't have to make me study. I studied. I studied more than they want, what they wanted me to study. You know, you had to take me away from studies because I like studies, you know. I like studying. They could not take me away from it because I liked doing it. Because now I had a purpose. Now I had a goal, I had an aim, and so on. But the thing, main thing is this, that I discovered that God is one who gives desires. Amen. Our God is a very profound God. Encounter with our God does not mean that he just gives us what we desire. That is cheap, my friend. If he just gave you what you desire, he must first give you desires. Because the problem with human being is their fallen nature, their low thoughts and thinking, so their desires are not good enough. They are not even a respectable, uh, they don't even make a respectable prayer before God. It's like going to a great king and standing before him and he says, what do you want? You say, five rupees, you know. <laughs> the king would feel insulted. He'd say, get out of here. For five rupees you came in here to see me? Ask anybody in the street, they'll give you five rupees. You come in here, you must have a big request. A request that matches my level. I will tell you the problem with the prayer of many Christians is that they do not have a request that matches their level. Hello. You know, some of these foundations that have money, some of the richest people in the world, you know, they have some foundation. There are billions and billions of dollars in it. And uh, they say, bring your uh, proposals of what you want to do. We are ready to fund it. And they say, the problem is, nobody knows how to write a proposal for $10 billion, you know. They have a proposal for $10 million, but that's peanuts. Nobody knows how to write a proposal for that big a project. Nobody has that big a project in mind because even if you went to school, they tell you, write it as small as possible because you'll get it. <laughs> big ones, you won't get it. So they train you to write the small ones. So you never go for the big ones, you know. So we, train, we are trained to think like this. We are trained to think in a small way, trained to do what we can do, but God trains you to do what he wants you to do. That's the difference between God and this world. So Christian life, I would say, is a life where you are transformed by the power of God coming into your life and the presence of Jesus and by the fellowship that you have with Jesus. Your desires are developed. You have a desire now. You have desires now. He gives you desires. 37.4, Psalm 37.4 does not say he'll give you whatever you desire. It simply says he'll give you the desires of your heart. It can be interpreted either way. It can mean he will give you whatever desire, whatever you desire, or it could mean he'll give you desires themselves. And what I'm saying is, it should be only taken to mean he will give you the desires. That is where life starts in Christian life. He'll first give you desires. He does not simply give you whatever you desire because if he gives you whatever you desire, you'll never get anywhere. That's the problem with a lot of people. They never get anywhere because they don't desire anything big. They don't desire in a, in a scale that God wants them to desire things. They don't desire things like that. They don't have no vision, no dream. 
no divine dream god given dream or vision for their lives so god when he comes into your life he makes a difference surely and the difference that he makes is he gives you a desire in your heart desires in your heart and when you give your when he gives your desires in your heart then that desire is your prayer what things ever so ever you desire in prayer mark 11:24 when desires come that desire is your prayer because now you have a god given desire see they told us don't desire anything that is not christianity don't don't you can't have any desires we thought of all desires as wrong evil no there are evil desires but all desires are not evil desire is the way that god contacts you and tells you what he wants you to do how do you think god directs you in the path of his will for your life he deals with your desires forms your desires gives you the desires shapes your desires and through that only he takes you in the direction he wants you to go in life so you must respect desires cultivate desires god and keep the desires listen to the desires and follow the desires because god is working in your life you need to know whether this is god or not and when you know this is god and god is working in your life you need to follow that desires are not bad desire is the way that god can deal with you god is not going to shout every day and say sam listen become a pastor how many people had this you know how many people had an angel come and tell them this you know if god wants you to be a pastor i will tell you he's not going to send an angel he's not going to shout from heaven if he shouted from heaven everything every building will come down <laughs> he's going to deal with your desire in your heart something is going to happen in your heart that is where he deals with you that is the contact point that you have with god if you enter with the confidence that he hears you because you know that you are praying according to his will then you also know that you have that you already have that you have already received that's what it means you also know that you have already received whatever petition you have desired from him so prayer is an amazing thing when you pray the prayer of faith it's not like buying lottery you know <laughs> you buy as many tickets as possible maybe one will hit it you know <laughs> they make millions of people poor and make one man rich but god wants to make every man rich <laughs> that's the difference between lottery and and god you know <laughs> this is not lottery that you pray one man said throw up about all the prayers throw it up maybe one will get the answer you know at least one will work that's the way i pray he says you know no that's not the way anybody should pray when you come asking you should have the confidence that he hears you because you already know that this is his will and you're asking according to his will and when you pray before you even actually receive it in reality you know that you have and you have already received the petitions that you have desired in that prayer when that when you get up from that prayer see when you get into the prayer you have the confidence that he hears you when you pray you have the confidence that he hears you when you finish the prayer you know you have already desired desired whatever you prayed and asked for Amen. now you can understand mark 11:24 what things ever you desire when you pray believe that you receive them and you shall have them desire comes from god so you voice the desire that's prayer believe that you've already received them because you know have the confidence that he hears you you know that you have whatever you asked for uh, from him and then the next step is you will have it because this is faith and this will always bring results amen such a friend and he made my heart his own God himself is with me and
And I know I'm never alone No, all my tomorrows will be better than all my hopes We've got love, grace, peace and power and joy in the Holy Ghost We've got love, my God is never wrong and He makes stand for me He got grace, it blew apart my chains and set the sinner free It's like a river and you'll never run it dry We got power over fear and death The past filled up with joy The Holy Spirit fills me up And I need Him every day Fire, faith, and confidence And knowing what to say I gave my heart and all I am To the one who loves me most We got love, grace, peace, and power And joy in the Holy Ghost We got love, my God And set the sinner free It's like a river And you never run it dry We got power over fear and death And minds filled up with joy The Holy Spirit fills me up And I need Him every day Fire, faith, and confidence And knowing what to say I gave my heart and all I am To the one Loves me most. We got love, grace, peace, and power, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We got love, my God is never wrong. He may stand for me. We got love, it blew apart my chains and set the sinner free. It's like a river, and you never run it dry. We got power over fear and death, and hearts filled up with joy. Such a friend that he made my heart and soul God himself is with me And I know I'm never alone I know all my tomorrows will be better than all my hopes We've got love, grace, peace and power and joy in the Holy Ghost We've got love, grace, peace and power and joy in the Holy Ghost We've got love, grace, peace and power and joy in the Holy Ghost 